Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. John Kelly profile here and welcome. Welcome to uh, a continuation of the piece we did yesterday on uh, the Trump shooter, uh, Thomas Crooks. Uh, I think there's much more to uh, look at here as far as his psychopathology goes. So as we come across various uh, interesting pieces uh to his thinking and his uh, psyche we're gonna we're gonna uh, kind of analyze it pull it apart break it down and put it out there for you so uh, we think we have a good one for you today uh, again always our deepest condolences go out to the uh, dead um and and uh, the victims families those that were killed and shot uh, you know, really, uh, we're, we're sorry uh, for all the trauma and death that uh, you've had to endure. Uh, so let's take a look here and uh, see what we're doing. And uh, we have an alleged video here from Fox News. They did a piece where they're talking to his neighbor. And I think it's very, very interesting if you want to take a look at this piece. And then we'll pick it up after the piece. I think you'll see it and enjoy it. Find very interesting. Encountered the uh, gentleman. I don't wouldn't call him a gentleman, but uh, walking up and down the road as he would go to work, I believe. And um, how far do you live from from the house? Uh, I went about four doors down, um, normal size Bethel Park yard, so I'd say four or five hundred yards. And so what, um, what would you witness with the family? Any interactions that you had? Uh, no interactions with the family, just what uh, neighbors have yeah, told me about them since this incident happened on the uh, present. And what are some of those odd incidents that, that talk of the town? Um, just describe the family uh, a little bit. Nothing really newsworthy on that side. And so as far as Thomas Crooks goes himself, you said he would walk up and down the street? Yes, yes. I, uh, I hurt my back one summer while at work, and I was off for about a month, and uh, I had a hard time walking my service dog, Julie. So I encountered him. I saw him walking, and I asked him, Hey, my man, would you... Uh, Come here for a second and he came over and i said uh i see you walk a lot and i would be willing to pay you um to walk my dog and in term he s said to me was f you f your dog i f and hate dogs so i just basically said well thank you for your time and turned around and walked back into my house Okay. So there you go. Nothing like being neighborly, right? I mean, so we're obviously seeing some uh, anger there. I mean, I really, uh, you know, I have a problem with people that, uh, you know, hate dogs. Yeah, for sure. That piece is bad. Um, so, John, going off that video, what's your first indication of him? You know, you know, being angry with that neighbor, what do you think? Yeah, this is the first uh, I've seen or heard about him really expressing any anger. And, you know, that's something that's kind of been bothering me, too, because usually when we see these shooters, you know, we're usually hearing or seeing about seeing some anger come out somewhere. You know, they're kind of uh, anger gatherers. Um, they go about gathering up a lot of anger and storing it and uh, keeping it inside and, um, you know, internalizing it. And usually they start to spew it out one way or the other, whether it's in a manifesto or a post or they're talking about it or something. But we never really seen that with Thomas Crooks until now. I mean, talk about being neighborly. I mean, you're going to treat your neighbor like this and his dog like this. And obviously the guy has a disability. I mean, 
So again, that goes back to him not being concerned. Allegedly, this is allegedly, this is based on what you know, his neighbor's saying here. I mean, uh, you know, not having any uh, care or concern, uh, you know, for a neighbor that's disabled. Again, extremely low empathy, uh, which kind of plays in to his psychopathology as far as us thinking uh, about, you know, he might have, again, I have, it's only my opinion, I have not ever seen him or diagnosed him, but not having any uh, uh, care or concern for others, should we say, I mean, you know, um, very, very um, a kind of uh, uh, disconcerting attitude towards people in general. And definitely the person that, you know, shot at Trump and shot at, she just shot into the crowd, then wasn't really concerned about other people. So that kind of fits, you know, to me, again, based on the allegations of this gentleman, I, I see no reason for him to lie mm -hmm. forward, but you never know in this world, you know, you really. You don't. So I hear a lot about the fantasy. Does the, you know, the rage have anything to do with his fantasy? Well, lots of times when people are, uh, you know, planning a, an event like this, and uh, especially an event where they feel it's going to be a murder or a mass murder, um, you know, they're they're focused uh, also, you know, on their on their own demise as well. I mean, they probably take. He certainly, I believe, took it to the end, and the end was going to be the end for him. Uh, again, he had some homemade bombs, so he'd go out in a blast, if you will, uh, in his mind, his fantasy, a blast of glory. Um, you know, he'd always be recognized. He'd be remembered throughout history. Uh, so this was going to be a very grandiose day for him. And, you know, when you're, when you're going through all this planning and everything else, I really believe you're stuck in kind of a fantasy and how you're going to be... Uh, uh, famous or infamous and how you're going to go on again uh, through history and be in various books or whatever. But the anger, it starts to build up internally and it creates a certain uncomfortability. So by staying in the fantasy and kind of uh, enjoying um, that, I'll say a bit of euphoria, you know, um, and self-gratification because you think you're going to uh, uh, be so accomplished and so recognized, it kind of, uh, you know, is soothing. It's kind of a soothing situation for the anger. I mean, the anger gets toxic and very uncomfortable in the body. So, you know, by, by thinking of other things, having other thoughts of grandiosity, and we know thoughts create feelings that make you feel better. So it kind of helps, you know, uh, smooth out, you know, this uh, internalized rage. I don't want waiting to see it somewhere because, I mean, how do you just go out? I mean, I, I know you want to be uh, uh, recognized for what you're doing and uh, you want to, uh, uh, you know, go into history. But still in all, I mean, pretty much whatever shooter we've run across uh, and mass murder, usually there's, you know, they're anger gatherers and they're filled up inside with uh, angry and with anger. And, you know, they they really um, they really express it some way, somehow, some shape or some form. We've get, we have not seen that we could. We could not find that, like I said, in posts or manifestos or talking about the first time we've seen it being vocalized and talked about, you know, allegedly by this neighbor, you know. So I think that's uh, I think that's uh, a very interesting piece, you know. So he's he's walking around, you know, with uh, with some anger and rightfully so. I think he's been teased a lot. Well, I don't know what his home life has been like. Yeah. Do you think the depression could tie into his anger and rage? A a absolutely. I mean, uh, if he's entertaining uh, a lot of negative thoughts, self-criticizing thoughts, I think the uh, depression definitely 
uh, could tie in there. Uh, again, we don't know how depressed or if he was depressed or whatever, but, you know, how can you be suicidal and not be depressed? You know, it's another story to me because obviously he felt uh, he was going to commit suicide by cop or by Secret Service or something, but I don't think he felt he was going to walk away from this event. So I have to believe there was a certain amount of, uh, and again, only my opinion, depression along with, uh, you know, uh, uh, narcissism and, uh, you know, his focus on, uh, you know, that uh, he was going to, uh, he was going to be really uh, recognized and known uh, forever. And he was going to be famous and uh, go through history. Uh, well, you know, as an inf infamous character, uh, you know, that uh, tried to assassinate the president. You know? Um, one question I have too, just why now? Why would he act out on all of this right now? Well, I think it gets to a point where, you know, you get, he, 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 he found out that a very famous man, um, uh, prior president of the United States was going to be in town. Right. So that was an opportunity. So now this is an opportunity for, for him to achieve, maybe in his mind, um, uh, you know, visual uh, immortality where he would be seen in various books, movies, uh, online, uh, et cetera. Um, you know, so he was going to be uh, uh, immortally. Uh, plunged into the internet and uh, into uh, people's memories for times to come. So he wanted to take advantage of this. And while he's in the process of planning this and going through the different stages of planning and, you know, uh, carrying it through his mind exactly how he's going to do it, that's very stimulating for, for somebody to... Uh, be focusing on that. And this is going to be like their greatest accomplishment ever or something. So, you know, that can be very stimulating. And that stimulation can be, again, very soothing, you know, to the uh, internal uh, anger, uh, depression, whatever. I mean, he's he's just moving forward towards his goal of, um, you know, um, becoming a very, very, um, you know, uh, famous person. Uh, and again, it's really infamous, but, you know, in his mind, I think he believes it's just, there's fame written all over it, you know, and he's going to become very famous. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, well, hey, John, good points. I'm glad you brought out that video, that neighbor. You know, I, 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 I also think that, uh, you know, to look at the anger, one, one last point, yeah. you know, it's like a river, like anger flows through us like a river. Okay. And it's a, uh, I call it the river of anger. It flows through, it flows through everybody. People, people, if you're human, you're going to get angry at times. But if you realize when you talk about it or write about it or get it out, if you turn that anger or rage or whatever it is into language, into writing about it, you start to get rid of it. OK, you're 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 turning that uh, anger into language and dumping it and getting rid of it. But if you don't do that, if you don't do that, and I don't think he did much of that, I think it was pretty quiet kind of person that just gathered, you know, um, uh, negative uh, feelings from wherever and stored them up inside. And, you know, probably uh, just went on, you know, and this is all being internalized. You know, he doesn't have an outlet for it. You know, we haven't seen him you know, with an outlet, except maybe shooting at the range, help soothe that anger. Um, we see it here coming out on this neighbor, 
Okay, so we see him getting it out there. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, not a typical response from a neighbor, right? Who's uh, disabled, uh, you know, the, you know, to talk to him uh, like that, right? And his dog, okay, but but I mean, so so as this anger builds up inside, if you don't have an outlet for it, and you're not getting it out in some which way, shape, or form, uh, whether it's writing or talking about it, you know, eventually that river of anger starts to build up and becomes dammed up, and eventually that dam bursts. And I think uh, that's what happened when he had the opportunity in his mind to become a very famous person and assassinate a former president uh, and someone who's running for president right now and, uh, you know, be able to, uh, you know, to just uh, to just do that. I mean, I, I think he got to the point where, um, you know, this this. Uh, was was all very stimulating to him and um was an outlet for him and um you know is going to be uh quite a uh quite an accomplishment uh for him but again it's the uh i think his river of anger uh uh you know has been building up for a long time in him and now we're just starting to see it i'm surprised we didn't see it sooner somewhere shape or form but we didn't see it anywhere and I'm hoping more of it comes out. I'm hoping more people, if they know anything, speak up about it because it's uh, it's a, it's very important here. I mean, uh, obviously, he uh, got to the point where he became extremely mentally ill and, uh, you know, uh, exploded in a homicidal and suicidal manner. Yeah, he really kept all this in all this time. That's the way it looks. Yeah. So if we're done, are we done? That's all I got for now. Yeah. Well, let's thank, you know, I want to thank the crowd for tuning in. Um, you know, all our uh, viewers out there, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Uh, we're going over your comments. You give us a lot of great comments we're going over. Uh, most importantly, if you like us, hit like. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. And um, most importantly, take care of yourself out there. We live in a violent world. You know, stay safe. Have a great day. And until next time, uh, and we'll keep reporting on this as, as different pieces of uh, his pathology that we think is his pathology come up. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll have more uh, here to unravel. But most importantly, uh, you take care of yourself. And uh, we'll keep you updated. Take care and God bless. Thanks, John.